จะได้รับความพระธรรมเสนอจากท่านอาจารย์ปัสยาพิบาลนายแพทย์ริชเชอร์ชัยยะสิริโสพลในเช้าวันนี้ขอบคุณใจที่ได้กลับมาที่นี่มาเทศนาแล้วผมคิดว่าเป็นสิ่งที่ดีมากที่ได้มาที่โบสถ์นี้เพราะโบสถ์นี้เป็นโบสถ์สำคัญมากที่ในกับคนไทย And I'm very honored this morning to be able to be here with you in this church uh, the original Thai church and just like last time I'm so excited to be here Uh, to deliver the word of God. All right. He already said both in both languages, right? The same message. I respect this pulpit. I feel like it's a great privilege to be here with all of you, my brothers and sisters. And I'm asking you, I want to ask you this morning, how are you doing this morning? Very good. Yeah, very good. Is it a, is it a good morning? Yes. Praise God. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer this morning. Father God, I thank you so much for this morning and the opportunity to be here in this church, one of your many churches here in the state of California, Father God. And as we gather here in this very special church, the original church, Father God, that came here, to bring the word to the Thai people, to the Lao people, I just pray that you be with us this morning, Father God. That you open the hearts and the minds of the people that are sitting here in this place, Father. Help them to hear your voice. Help any barriers, Father God, that are between them and you this morning to be completely decimated, destroyed, and obliterated. So that this morning in this place they can hear your voice, they can have the hope that is in you, They can renew their faith, which is in you. They can be built up in energy that comes from you, Father God. And I pray, Father, that you give me the strength and courage that you place, that you place strength and courage to preach the words that you place in my heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, if you don't know me, my name is Victor. Victor. <laughs> And maybe many of that name doesn't mean much to you, but I am the son of Dr. Sirichai Chaya Sarisabam. <laughs> and, and when I move amongst Thai communities, I usually don't really have a name. They usually know me as the son of Dr. Sirichai. <laughs> So on behalf of Dr. Sirichai and my mother, they, they send their warmest regards and they wanted to say hello and God bless you this morning. We worship this morning as one church. Under one God. Unified this morning to preach the word of God to the people. So that they may receive the truth. So they may receive salvation. So they may receive the promise of heaven. Through the Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We know this verse well, John 3:16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Do you believe that? Amen. Well, do you believe that? Yes. Do you still believe that? Yes. yes. Amen. Well, as you say that we believe that, let me tell you the story of a church. And this is a church that we find in Revelation in this sermon that I've entitled, The Return. Now, 
Now, when you think of the word return, this may remind you of several things. Some of you may think of the return of Jesus Christ as he will be back one day, he promised us. Some of you who watch basketball may be thinking of the return of a famous basketball player like Derrick Rose. Some of you who like Star Wars may be thinking of the movie Return of the Jedi. But I am not talking about any of these returns this morning. I'm talking about an equally important return. That John challenges this church with. See, in Revelation chapter 2, he speaks to the angel of the church in Ephesus. And if you look in Revelation chapter 2, this is what he writes. He says, the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven golden lampstands, says this. I know your deeds and your toil and perseverance, and that you cannot tolerate evil men. เรารู้จักแนวการกระทําของเจ้ารู้ความเหนื่อยยากและความอดทนของเจ้าและรู้ว่าเจ้าไม่สามารถทนต่อทรชนได้แม่ You're very good. That was awesome. Thank you. And put to the test those who call themselves apostles and they are not, and you found them to be false, and you have perseverance and have endured for my name's sake and have not grown weary. เจ้าได้ลองใจคนเหล่านั้นที่อวดตัวว่าเป็นอัครทูตแต่หาได้เป็นไม่และเจ้าก็เห็นว่าเขาเป็นคนมุสาเรารู้ว่าพวกเจ
They've been serving God for hundreds of years. They had a legacy of families in their church who passed the word of God down from generation to generation. In fact, if you don't know this church, this is the church near which St. John, if you go to this slide, is his buried. That's St. John's tomb. That is near the Ephesian church. The St. John that wrote the book of Revelation. You know the Ephesian church? You know the Ephesian church is a historical church near the house where the mother of Jesus Mary traditionally lived. That's her house. So it's a historical church that made the maybe the Mother of Jesus even went to. And then they They were a great church that had a great ministry opportunity. Because why? They lived near their church was near this. And you know what that was? That was the temple of Artemis. The temple made to a false god in the Roman Empire. But the great thing about having a church there was that there were so many people came to visit this temple. And as they traveled there, this church in Ephesus would reach these people. I mean, they were a historical church. They were an ancient church. A church that served God for many, many years. A church that had been faithful. A church that continued to have great ministry opportunities. A church that did great things. I mean, John listed them. He said they did not tolerate evil men. He said they put to test those who call themselves disciples or apostles, even though they were false apostles. They put them to the test. They they launched yeah, even the people that faked their way into the church, they found them out because they were paying attention. They had perseverance. They kept going to church every single week, ministering to the people every single week. They did that. They endured for God's name, for my name's sake. That's what John writes they did. And year after year, they did not grow weary. But even after all that, even with all that, they lost their heart. How did this happen to them? How does this happen to our churches today? How does this happen to our churches that, for, that, that, that have served for a long time and been their communities for a long time? How does this happen? Well, I think it happens for three different reasons. The first reason is this. Alzheimer's disease. <laughs> Y'all know what Alzheimer's disease is? <laughs> Alzheimer's disease is a disease that strikes you usually when you get older. We used to call it old-timers disease. <laughs> because it's a disease where you begin to forget and you can't remember anything. 
And you see this sometimes amongst your grandparents, sometimes amongst the older people, they go, they are in your life. People get Alzheimer's disease. But guess what? The church also sometimes get Alzheimer's disease. And what I mean by that is that the church sometimes forgets who it is and what it's supposed to do. If you don't like it called being called Alzheimer's disease, then you may call it also Samson's disease. Do you remember the story of Samson? He was that biblical strong man who had the, the power of many, many men. He also, unlike me, had very long and beautiful hair. <laughs> Hey, short hair is good too, okay? <laughs> but if you remember Samson, what he was born to do was he was born to be a judge. A judge for God. But because he was so strong, but because he was so handsome, but because he had a weakness for women, Samson loved women. <laughs> he forgot what he was supposed to do. Which was to represent God. Which was to lead God's people. He had the power. But forgot what he was supposed to do. So he lost his heart. Until the very end. So Alzheimer's disease, that's sometimes the reason why churches lose their heart. Samson's disease, that's sometimes why churches lose their heart. 